and that's key to reinforce that if you do go with a publicist. Like, I work with a publicist in L.A., um, and I get a lot of work through her. She's actually my publicist as well. But the key thing is, you want to find a publicist that knows these people. Because if they don't, they're not very oh, good publicists. I know. Publicist. I've already had like, the old like, school ones. They're useless. Exactly. <laughs> like, she's an old school publicist, but she's like, I want to team up with you and people you know so I can refer you to my clients and I look good in the in, you know, in end result. Which is key, it builds her brand. She knows important people that do good work. So in result, her clients are happy, even if she's not technically doing anything, she's referring. And that's the same thing with it's clients. It's all about the referral. Yeah. I can say that it's all about yep. the referral for us and it's all about the referral for all of you. You need to learn how to make a good referral for someone else mm -hmm. so they want to refer to you mm -hmm. as well. And, and that's key even if freelancing say, if I don't want a client and I want to turn them down, it's better if I refer them to someone else. Yeah because it looks good on me. I'm not the bad guy. If I'm like, I don't want to do your product, they can kind of get mad and walk away. But if I'm like, hey, I know someone that'll fit you better, let me pass them on, looks good on me, and they might come back to me in the long run and do something else. Right. So, are, you guys, are all of you on LinkedIn or using it actively? Yeah. What is your, like, from, from Forrest down, like, how much, how, how much time do you spend on LinkedIn? It's, my profile's up and it's complete. I tend not to, I haven't used it. Okay, yeah. Ryan. Yeah, pretty much the same thing. I mean, you find me on there, I'll connect. But like Twitter, Twitter it's probably is probably better to okay. connect with me on. How about you, Chelsea? Same thing. L LinkedIn, but mostly Twitter. Casey? Yeah. Meh. Really? Okay. <laughs> I don't even think my file or my profile is complete. Yet. I'm up on LinkedIn and I I connect with people, but it's I never it's not that dynamic. Okay. F Facebook and Twitter yeah. are yeah. different. Yeah, Joel. Um, pretty much the same thing. I will say that I have gotten at least a couple of job offers from I think. I think LinkedIn and Google contacted me like as I was leaving school. And so I maybe that's just I think that was because I was leaving school they found, you know, that out and they were interested Cheap in hiring labor. people. Cheap yeah, labor. Somewhat. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. Um, so I, yeah, I think it has some benefits but I don't use it on a daily basis certainly. Okay. I think I'm odd man out. Um, because on paper I do not look good. <laughs> um, by my, do you, do you uh, think in real life? Yeah. By, oh, oh, no, 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 no. Um, all right, all right. Uh, I would have to say I'm not formally educated in my trade, so I do not have a degree. So I do not get many job offers through LinkedIn or anything like that. Um, my key thing is networking. Get to know people. My portfolio is the main thing I push because yeah. my portfolio and what I do. Um, and the people I know. Every job I've gotten into, a full time or anything, it's through who I knew. Um, and that's, it, it's kind of the challenge for me. You know what I mean? Like I've uh, interviewed with Crispin and Porter to work with, like work with them and I had to know people in Crispin, work around the HR department because they filtered me out like nobody's business. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I, yeah, LinkedIn, I'm up there, but yeah, yeah I don't use it. Yeah, so for Jeff, right? um, just to throw out something for Jeff, I mean, we hang out at the Cup Coffee Shop all the time. We freelance there, actually. Mm -hmm. We were, all, we were all there today, <laughs> and um, I brought him on for our, the television show that I mentioned that I work on, so he designed our, our television site for, so I mean, it, that's a huge gig, and we got that because we talk all the time, we hang out, so, yeah. yeah. It's all who you know. I, from everything I've heard in the you know, weeks we've been here, content seems to be one of the most important things, but the other thing that seems to me is what your domain name is and how you get to that. I have a very specific question that you can generalize. I'm writing a book called Happiness in the Absence of Money. Nice thought. I have a domain name called Time in, called Time for Happiness Now. I will see important people like Jeff, like uh, Seth Godin, mm -hmm. like Brian L. Burns last week. Should I have a? Should I go for John Bynum? Should I go for Ask John Bynum? Should I go for time for happiness now? Where I mean, I'm using it as a specific example, but I, you don't have to target me. What is the logic that someone should use at this step of their development? Where okay. Well, all right. Different? That's a great question. Maybe I'll rephrase it. So, how did you come to the decision? Like, I'll just throw it out there. Mm -hmm. Like, how did you come to the decision that you did? Uh, of what to call your company or what to how to brand your your domain name. Let's let's actually ask Chelsea fresh twist. How did you come to that decision? How, how did I brand my company? How did I come up with my company name? Yeah, that, uh, I wrote down hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of words and um, thought of the positive um, aspects of that word and the negative connotations that it might have. Um, looked 
for other companies that were similar to me that I didn't want to be mistaken for, um, what, what domain names were open. Mm -hmm. um, like I was, I, I, I had settled on Fresh Twist, mm -hmm. but I could have been Fresh Twist Marketing, Fresh Twist Advertising, Fresh Twist Creative. Um, and honestly, Creative was the open domain name. But um, I think the issue for me is everybody else here, almost every one of you, have a domain name, but it's your name. Oh, how you... How do oh, you choose? Oh, that's... Well, I'm, I'm asking okay. you the dynamics of where you should start and where you should focus your attention. Uh, I think, oh, you want to go? Go. Well, um, yeah, mine's good. I mean, yeah, I've actually struggled. I talk Gwen all the time, like, Gwen, how should I brand myself? You know? <laughs> She's got a good yeah. brand name. She's got a very good brand name. Yeah, well, well, I think it just depends per person. Like, mm -hmm. so I have powerup.tv, okay. for me, and I use it differently. So my personal side, I finally decided brand just for film. Mm -hmm. Like, when you go there, it's only going to really talk about my film endeavors, and that's just helpful for me. My name sticks out more. But for Power Up, it's more about the the company. And actually, I'm starting to rebrand that to include all these people here. Mm -hmm. So when you go to that site, you're going to see all of us. Mm -hmm. And you know, I have tons of URLs. So it's more about like. If it's going to be about you as an author and a person, that might be great to just use your name. I could probably see it going yeah. either way. Yeah. Um, I agree. Yeah. So I agree with the same aspect. We all have personal portfolios, and they're all our names. A um, couple funny marketing, I guess, maybe not marketing. I don't know how to fit this. But there's only seven dwarves because you can remember all their names. Seven is a key number. Mm -hmm. So it's keeping things short mm -hmm. and keeping yeah. things simple. Yeah. Basic thing to user interface when I had interns or designers working under me, if a five-year-old can use it, it's good. That means anybody can use it. So it's kind of the name, too. You want a name that's simple, concise, and people can remember. Stuff in my beard, it's kind of goofy, but people remember that because it's different. Like, it's not the shortest name, but it's it's different. And yeah. that's, yeah, that's... I think I there's think an ideal, thing. too, like, you know, Chelsea was saying, trying to go and find all the different combinations. Mm -hmm. and. I mean, we all want the best domain name, short, sweet, rememberable, if we get that. But the domain names are just so flooded anymore. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I love to just buy domain names. I mean, I've backed off, but I'm just like, here's a good one. It totally means nothing. I don't. If you can't get it, he has it. I know where he lives. You know where you got I know where he lives. Right. We'll, we'll take it by force. But you know, I just kind of accepted that. You know what? I'm just going to have to have a compromise. And in the end, everything else stands up above for me. I mean, mm -hmm. I try to get the best domain name I can, but... Show up, do good work, do good uh, networking, marketing. Yeah. Have a good site, a usable site that's beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everything else will follow, and then people will know your domain name. But it, it, it's not the end of the road either. I mean, if right. you pick one domain name, it's there's a it's a small part of what you're doing, but people get used to it after a while. Oh. And I just wanted to say one thing before, yeah. if it's okay. Um, you know, naming is a whole, it's a big process, and it, and it ties into a lot, and you can spend a lot of time on it. Yeah. Uh, just on the issue of URLs and picking a domain name, there there is another route to go that is extremely powerful. And and stuff in my beard is is kind of pulling on it. What I'm referring to is um, using a, an extremely powerful metaphor in the name of your business and have that be part of your URL. Your URL. So um, a case in point is duct tape marketing. Many of you have probably never heard of that. And just me saying that domain name. You've already told yourself what that business is about. Absolutely. So, and the power of metaphor is that um, you are drawing on knowledge that is already in someone's mind, and you pull it out of them, and then they tell themselves a story about what your business is about, and you do it in a few syllables. It's extremely difficult to find this, and then to see if the domain name is available. But and just to toss it out there, as you're thinking about name, you know, naming what the name of my personal brand, or name it the name of the book, or it could be something else. Um, keep in mind the, the power of metaphor and try to come up with something that, that um, puts an image into someone's mind and, and it'll stick there. We have a question in the back. Yeah. I just want to make sure we get everybody. Yeah, you want to jump in? Yeah, I mean, I think it's like the first thing I would tell them was to use their own name because when you work with artists, writers, I mean, they all use their own name. I don't see why. I If I have a photographer and they use some sort of company name, I can't find them because I always just want their I just throw them at their name. So I don't hire like Blue Sky Productions or something. I hire John something something. Yeah. So if you're a writer or something or an artist right. or a photographer, I would say just 